what is up guys, David Zhao here and this is the Sony 85mm f1.4 G Master lens, the king of portrait lenses, a lens I've owned for over two years now, one of the three lenses that go with me no matter where I go, whether it's a wedding or traveling for fun. Critically acclaimed as one of the sharpest lenses on a Sony body, I've been wanting to review this lens for a while now and here it is. As always, let's start with the build quality of this lens. Like other G Master lenses, this thing is built like a tank. Full metal construction combined with the beautifully crafted glass elements makes this thing weigh a hefty 1.8 pounds or 820 grams. With professionals in mind, this lens was made with many physical features that make life easier. Features include an autofocus manual focus switch, a physical focus hold button, a nice to handle rubber focus ring, and a physical metal aperture ring that can be set to auto to be electronically controlled or operated manually. Additionally, the aperture ring has a click declick switch, which lets the user switch between a clicked or declicked aperture ring. Clicked being useful for photographers who don't want to accidentally change the aperture, and declicked being useful for videographers who want to smoothly change the exposure using the aperture ring. Finally, Sony noted that this lens is dust and moisture resistant, which is comforting for professionals that are going to put this lens through a lot of use in varying environments and weather conditions. Now, this lens comes in at $1,799 brand new, a hefty price tag, even for a professional series lens like the G Master series. But if you're considering this lens, you're either a very avid prosumer or you're a professional who wants a lens that can be a resilient tool that provides incredible results consistently. Let's begin with image quality. I think it's fair to say that this is a sharp lens with very few compromises, if any, when it comes to image quality. Image-wide sharpness from center to the corners begins even when the lens is wide open at f1.4. Usually with lenses that are super fast, you trade some image quality for the ability to shoot at a wide aperture like f1.4, but not with this lens. And what's even more surprising is it still has more to offer in terms of sharpness when you stop down to f2.8 or f4. Now, artifacts that usually result from wide apertures like chromatic aberration are well controlled, but this doesn't mean they don't exist. You'll still find CA in brightly contrasted shots, but it is noticeably more controlled than other lenses I've shot with at f1.4, including the recent Sigma 56mm f1.4 I reviewed. And bokeh, or the quality of the out of focus area, is superb on this lens. Sony puts a lot of care into their GM line of lenses, and with 11 rounded diaphragm blades, bokeh is always smooth and creamy and results in very circular bokeh balls throughout the aperture range. Color fidelity also stays strong even when confronted with difficult backlit situations. This is thanks to the nano AR coating applied to the front of the element of this lens, which helps combat the haze produced by bright lens flares. Speaking of lens flares, this lens has some of my favorite flaring qualities. I always expect and get lens flares that have this nice smooth gradient quality with good roll off. This means I either get a soft large flare or at certain angles I get a pleasing cinematic flare. What I don't get are hard edged oversaturated flares that cheaper lenses produce, which was actually one of my only complaints about the Sigma 56. Autofocus is also as fast as it gets when it comes to any native lenses. I've never had a bad experience autofocusing with this lens. And honestly, I think that the camera bodies are the only bottlenecks when it comes to autofocus accuracy and smoothness. And that says a lot considering Sony's autofocus system is quite incredible. All of this means that this lens is perfect for portraits where you want to capture crisp, clean, detailed images of your subject. It provides some of the best contrast and subject separation I've experienced with any lens. Which is why this lens has been my go-to for portrait photos, graduation photos, wedding photos, etc. for the past two years. So how about video quality? Well, carrying the same sentiments over from the image quality section, we're still looking at a lens that is capable of capturing truly stunning footage. However, there are certain additional considerations specifically for video recording. 
One of the qualities of fast lenses are the soft lens flares, and in video, I think you can truly appreciate them. While you can get this lens to flare incredibly brightly, it hardly ever flares so much that it completely washes out the image. The Nano AR coating really does an incredible job on maintaining and controlling that flare to the point where you still have good contrast. Which means you can get some incredibly stylized shots where you have these gorgeous lens flares hitting the screen, but not so dominating that it takes away from the visual that you're trying to show. Another thing to note specifically for video is the image distortion that a telephoto lens can have. Usually, the cheaper the lens, the more pronounced the barrel or pincushion distortion there will be. While for photos, it's as easy of a fix as clicking a button or two in Lightroom, for videos, it's a much more tedious process of removing the distortion. And in that process, you end up losing valuable pixels. Fortunately, that's another thing that the Sony 85 1.4 does really well. It shows a very small amount of pincushion distortion, so little as a matter of fact that it's not even really worth it correcting in videos. I still do it in photos because it's, it's literally a click of a button, but for videos, it, it's really not worth it. You're not, it's not that much distortion happening. Lastly, the autofocus speed, as I said earlier, is as fast as it gets. The performance you see, whether you like it or not, will really be determined by how good the autofocus system is on your current camera body. So what is this lens lacking? I do wish that it was a stabilized lens. It lacks optical steady shot. And while it's not the biggest problem in the world since most of the bodies you'll be shooting with this lens on will have in-body image stabilization, it's never quite as good as optical stabilization. Also, I do wish it had truly linear manual focus. It does use fly-by-wire electronic focusing when you manually turn the focus ring. However, this is the professional line of lenses from Sony, so they put more care into developing a linear algorithm for their fly-by-wire system for these lenses. And I've definitely noticed that when I'm manual focusing with this lens that you get almost linear pools that are almost consistently repeatable. The next thing is, I dislike the minimum close focusing distance of 2.6 inches or 80 centimeters. I mean, I get it, this lens can't do it all, it's not a macro lens, but there are times where I want to do product photography or just push really close into a subject, but I can't do to that limitation. And another thing is, I want to say that at some point, sharpness of the lens can't really be realized because there's only so much detail you can capture based on how much information your sensor is pulling in. So what I'm saying is uh, that despite being so sharp of a lens, it may not really truly show in your videos or even photos when your image is limited to a certain resolution. Where it truly shines is when you pair it with an a7R2 or a7R3 and those 42 megapixel photos, you can really just punch in and see how much detail is captured with that combination. So what's my conclusion? It's important to ask, who is this lens for? If you're an amateur photographer that only ever plans on engaging photo videos at a hobby level, it doesn't really make sense for you to invest so much money into something that you're not going to really intend to put to the grindstone. It'd really be more prudent to opt for something like the Sony 85mm f1.8, a pretty good lens with respectable sharpness and similar qualities of this lens, but for less than the quarter of the cost at around $570. If you're an avid prosumer who does photography and videography a lot, it's something you're passionate about and you might even make some money from, it could make sense to invest in this lens as opposed to buying a cheaper lens like the Sony 85 f1.8 and then eventually spending more money to upgrade to this lens. It might just make sense to just buy this lens in the first place. Now, if you're a professional, this is a no-brainer. If you do portraits, weddings, commercials, short films, product work, the list goes on and on, then you should definitely invest in good long-term usage glass. While camera bodies depreciate at an accelerating pace with new bodies constantly being released every single year, quality camera lenses tend to hold their value over the years as long as you keep the glass well-maintained. The return on investment for good glass is definitely worth it. For me, I said it earlier and I'll say it again, it's one of the three lenses I always have with me no matter what I'm shooting. It's been one of my favorite purchases in the past three years when it comes to photo video gear and it's one of the last lenses I'd sell if I had a downsize. So if you're interested in checking out this lens, there will be a link to it in the description down below. But now let's hear from you guys from the Sigma 56 review. Vita Visuals said, 
Great video, I'm waiting for mine to come in. Your videos honestly look like they come from a channel with 100K plus subs. Thank you, honestly, uh, I've always believed that quality content comes first and the growth will come and follow that if you do your job right. So I really appreciate that. I'm really happy that you know I'm moving in the right direction. Thank you so much, guys. User D Webers commented about a blatant inaccuracy in my video, and I really appreciated that. I ended up making a pinned comment about it thanks to the correction. I'm learning as I go as well, and my number one goal is to try to educate to the best of my ability, and the last thing I want to do is to spread misinformation. So thank you so much for that. And ME said, how is your how is your mustache coming along? Rude. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you enjoyed this review, please feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified of when new videos are released. And I'd love to hear what you guys think about this lens in the comment section down below. I'm going to stick around and chat down there if you guys have any questions, if you just want to talk. As always,